Hi everybody. Black Pixie back with a political point of view video. And this video is about this young lady. Her name is Ertho Ackley Kenyon for District 7 City Council on Tuesday, August 27th. And this is in her district is District 7 in St. Petersburg, Florida. And her message is make the South Side black again. You can go to um, African Diaspora News Channel and you can um, hear her checks the media and stays on code when they try to change the narrative of her message that um, the um, black American fight is against LGBTQ which is what her incumbent um, issue is for the LGBTQ and and he wanted to know what she thought about that well she didn't think very much about it because let me see if I can play some of it that way you can hear after hearing her fight for the community with passes she stuck responsible for opening up the door for these non-factor candidate who hasn't raised any years okay I'm gonna big developers rents are being gentrified out of existence well, I feel like my platform reparations and economic development to the black community is the only platform in this entire race that stands against the black community being gentrified out of existence in this city. The black people right now are under attack by the city government. We're being pushed out by people, you know, gentrifiers, land developers, the politicians in office. They work for them. They're being funded by them. My opponents are being funded by these big developers. Rents are going up. Luxury apartments are being built everywhere. No genuine affordable housing. And reparations and economic development is the only genuinely Aggressive platform that speaks to social and economic justice for everyone in the city by ending the oppression of the black community. And if I don't do it, if we don't do this right now, there won't be a black community in two years. Okay. I'm going to address the, um, the elephant in the room. Um, your opponent, um, Chico, is, is familiar. he has made statements that uh, he doesn't support the gay agenda, as he calls it, and he plans to make sure that taxpayers don't go to support uh, gay-supported uh, things. What do you think about all that? Well, I want to redirect this discussion because I think that this whole thing about, you know, this non-factor candidate who hasn't raised any money in his campaign, he's not running a real campaign, he's not the person I'm fighting against. In fact, you know, as offensive as his remarks are, the reality is the elephant is the, in the room is the oppression of the black community. And the media is attempting to divert everyone's attention away to the real fight, which is the fight against these big developers, these gentrifiers that are pushing out the black community. They're trying to divide the people of the city by making the black community the of anti-LGBTQIA, but that is not what this fight is about. This fight is with us and the big money politicians and the big money developers, and I won't even engage in a conversation about a non-factor when my real opponent, the incumbent, is the one that is responsible for opening up the door for these gentrifiers, for people like Carl Nurse to come into my community and push us out. That is the fight. That is what the people are talking about. Not this nonsense that the people, that the media is trying to tell people that is the problem. That is not the problem. That is not what I'm hearing when I'm going door to door talking to people. They're talking about the rents going up. They're talking about sewage in the water. That's what people are uh, talking about. So if the media has their ear to the ground and is actually listening to the people, you would know what this fight is about. And it's not what this person is saying. Thank okay. you. Now, this particular so, candidate, okay, Sister Arisa. Off. I am very, very uh, impressed uh, 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 that she uh, stuck to the message. Okay, she okay. stuck to code. Okay. So, let me, let me minimize that. So, you see here, this young lady, she is, um, she fighting for the real cause. She fighting for what actually going on in ADOS communities. And um, 
and we can see your um um on Pharaoh said that channel he was talking about um the war on Ados in Los Angeles. The Mexicans, Hispanics are just murdering black people in their homes. And I've seen uh, um, in the news where they are burning, people moving to the neighborhood. They, I think they killed a family of five. They threw fire bombs in another, uh, in another person's house. They buy property and move in. And Hispanics are like, well, black people are not allowed on the planet or something. So they said that message that um, um, Los Angeles, Texas was theirs first. And it, I don't believe that because black people were born here. Coming up on 400 years. Ancestors brought over here and, and, and black people have been enslaved. Brought from everywhere, and you know, just here. So, my thing is, why people in the 70s, because I'm 58, so I was old enough to remember when the Mexicans came on boats by the masses like the Hondurans are doing now at the border, coming over here in the masses. And I remember, I think I was in high school, when they sent Haitians back. They weren't allowed to come over here. But all other migrants were. Those are, those who are honorary whites. So, all Mexicans, I don't care what their skin tone is. All of them may not be treated fairly. But they're all considered whites. Because even the dark-skinned Mexicans are treated better than black people in general as a group so my thing is everybody says black people don't pick themselves up by their bootstrap well ados is putting themselves up by the bootstrap that just that they um that's just naturally opening up to them and what is that boot what is that bootstrap the lineage that everybody Every immigrant group that comes over here has their lineage. And they um they separate themselves or categorize themselves in lineages. Even though they say we're all black, but all of these black immigrants that have their own um functions and events that is tighter. Nigerian tri tribute, Jamaican this, um, Cuban this, whatever country they're from, they bring their flag with them. So when dark skinned people from all over the um, world who were drugged over here and were bred with Indians, or Aboriginals, Whites, all the immigrants that are coming here later. But there are still a group of people that are pushed out. Like the young lady says, they're pushed out. They have no place to live. They get to live in the streets and die. Which, in, black people are survivors. A lot may die, but as a group, at us, black people are survivors. You leave us alone, and we will survive. But, from what I'm seeing, what's going on from all groups of people, they come here to to basically use ADOS as their crush, like something Pharaoh said that was saying. Mexicans come over here, they, um, when they was getting sent back, they says, oh, we minority too. We, um, 
whatever too, so they could get to stay over here. And then when they start getting the officers, then they pull away from black people, kick them down, and then they start supporting each other to pull each other up. And now black people, Adolf's is just nothing to them. So now that Adolf's have created something themselves, like African American or colored people or um whatever they want to call whatever they want to call um descendants of slaves so now we we'll woke our eyes are open and we'll see okay this thing is about lineage you have the nigerian group they'll say well you not you black you black you not nigerian you got jamaican group you black you not Nigerian, Jamaican. You black. You not Nigerian. Then I want to get my hair braided because the Africans are over here taking over all the um, black hair um, businesses and want adults blacks to come to him convincing adults black women that they should not let American black women do their hair because Africans are better. I remember when that advertising went, oh, oh, African did African, like, what's the difference between an African and an American black person doing their hair? Oh, it's just the idea that they come from the island, they do better. They don't do no better than us. We been braiding our hairs since slavery. Give me a break. So, if anything, it's in our DNA. We know how to braid our hair. We know how to do our hair. But, when everything that you try to do, you being you being taken out and said to feed yourself, and every time you go to eat, they snatch your plate away and slam it against the wall, and say, "Why are you not eating? Why are you so skinny?" Wait, I'm doing a video. I'm doing a video. Okay, yeah, I'll plug it up for you. I got another charge in there. That blue charge is not in there. Anyway, that's my granddaughter wants to go on six percent. But anyway, um, I shut my door because every time I go to do a video, these kids get all crazy. I do not since I shut the door. That we don't know. But anyway, so every time Adolf try to do something. You know, you know, they just try to take care of themselves like we all said we need to do. Like when I was training my uh, my grand training my kids to be entrepreneurs, I might they got them selling candy, whatever. Now, see now, she realized I'm doing a video. She don't go around there harassing her, screaming, hollering sister. But anyway, um, her mom's in the room, so she'll take care of that. If she don't get too loud. But anyway, so. Made me miss my thought. What was I saying? What was the point I was trying to get to? Um. Mm, yeah. Um. Okay. Anyway, anyway, they were like, "Well, you need to pick yourself by your bootstrap." Oh yeah. Why you not eating? Why you don't have a job? Why you can't this? Why you can't that? But when we get a job, you're the first to be let go, or we just simply not hired. So, my thing is, they won't add it. They tell adults, this is what you need to do. You can do everything all the other black people that come over here did. Those black people that come over here by planes, that come over here by trucks, because I don't know any black people that came on dinghy boats, that came, however they got here, however. However, the black immigrants got here, Jamaican, Nigerian, African, Dominican, Trinidadian, any black immigrant that came over here. It doesn't matter how they got here. The point is, they got here because they see Adolf's black descendant of slaves, descendant of slavery, whose ancestors were drug over here as burdens of beasts or beasts of burdens to be worked to death by other groups of people 
now that they see those burdens of beasts, that descendants of slavery will turn into now, they'll be living better. Oh, I want to come over here and live better than they made it. So they come over here, we got tricked into thinking, oh, we all black, we all did. It's not about black anymore. It's about lineage. It's always been about lineage with all the other groups of people. Well, you're not Chinese, or you're not Asian. Mm, you're not Mexican. Mm, you're not Indian. Okay, you're not at us. Therefore, at us, not listening to the rhetoric that we don't know nothing. We don't know our history. At us, how can a group of people live a history and don't know it? Yeah, I know they say we went to school and they teach us a whole nother his story instead of my story. It's time for the thing about it is we grew up, we were we lived bred through our descendant of slavery history. Therefore we know it. All we gotta do, all I gotta do is go ask my mama. And my mama can tell me what her mama told her. So, it's not that we don't know our history and we can't know it. What we live, we can know that so we can, that way we can easily trace our lineage back. My mama and my daddy remembers, my great remembers, of course they remember um, their mama and daddy, but they remember their grandmama and granddaddy as well as their great-grandmama and granddaddy. They know those people. Because my great-great-granddaddy was <clears throat> full of the Cherokee Indian. So we can chase our lineage. We can probably chase our lineage to to not only just Cherokee Indian. Because, see, I'm born in the South. All my um, ancestors, as far as I know, are born in the South. As far as my grandparents go, we could I could be from other groups of people. I could have some Haitian. I could have some Haitians in me. I could have white in me. I could have well, whatever. But none of that matters. It's it's who I am now. We are Ados, and I was born into <clears throat> a chemical family, a chemistry because. Because biologically, it's all chemistry. So I was born into this family, to this Ados family. Now, what family I was born into before Ados, mm -hmm. I don't know. But I know my mama and daddy, grandmama, granddaddy on both sides, great grandmama and great granddaddy. I know they were born into Ados. So. Then you go back to the great great. I don't know if they were slaves or slaves that ran away or free slaves or whatever. I don't know because I'm not going to, I don't have money to be paying ancestry to be going all the way back there for, I don't know. I know I can take you to the grave site of my great grandmama and my great granddaddy. I can do that. I can take you to a tombstone. And my mother, and I have some aunts that remembers um, my great great grandma and my great great granddad. I can go to them. You know, so adults can trace each other. So this thing's about lineage. Once we start dealing with lineage, now everybody want to go all crazy. Adults hate immigrants. We don't hate nobody. The same way. All the black immigrants that come over here and is doing very well for themselves, those that are in the entertainment business, those that are in the um, broadcasting business, news business, they're there. Adults is not there. So they're doing well. But want to come tell us that, oh, we are kata, which means, uh, I think that's what that girl said, kata means wild animals. And we know wild animals. Adolf is treated like wild animals. Treated. But they are not wild animals. If you 
even a wild animal, in minding its own business, you go out there and start throwing rocks and bricks and beating it and throwing hot water on it or just whatever inhumane thing that you can do. You do all that at an animal and that animal sees you. He gonna get you. Like they say, elephants have long memories. This man comes up and just killed this man. Think about it is. We are more so loving spiritual people. But after a while, loving spiritual people got to start fighting for themselves. They got to see. They got to see what. Where the fight is. Instead of fighting each other, we got to see. Where the fight is. We are loving people. What is the problem? Okay. This is what I think. We can still be loving people, loving, compassionate people, because that's what I'm about. But I also got that dark side that says, I'm going to have to fight. I'm going to have to fight when necessary. But then again, I have love and compassion for everybody. Oh, but I'm not going to have love and compassion for somebody hitting me in my face. Snatching my plate away while I'm trying to eat and telling me, why are you not eating? Reminds me of a job I was on when I was working at the sewing plant. I'm working. The owner of the plant telling me, this is the work that I was a surgeon. This is the work that I need you to work on. Take me from the work that I'm already working on, that I already know how to do, to something that I've never done. And he said, well, I, I'm gonna, well this is what I need you to do. Okay, I go do that. Well, you know, go ask my supervisor how to do it. Get my supervisor, show you how to do it. Okay, I ask the supervisor. She's busy. 30 minutes later, lazy later, my supervisor hasn't come yet, so I'm calling her. She's, she's just looking at me. She's looking at me. Once she looked at me, I realized she wasn't coming to show me how to do anything. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to do this work. He comes over there. Well, why aren't you doing the work that I asked you to do? I'm like, the supervisor hasn't come show me. He said, well, did you ask her? I'm like, yeah. He said, well, maybe she's busy. Right then and there, struck a nerve. See, these stupid, I ain't, see, I'm not about that. And this was back in, the, um, my youngest son born 91. So this was back in the 90s. So this was back in the 90s, back in 1990. Cause it wasn't 80, cause I was working in 89, my daughter came 89, my second daughter came 90. So this was back in 89, 90, cause I only worked about 8, 9 months, 10 months at the tops, any place ever. Because I just, cause I cannot deal with people, I don't know what you call it, but it's not something that I can sit there and go through. Because... After a day of that, I'm going to have my scissors ready, sitting on it, because I'm not, I might have been bullied in school, but as an adult, I was going to be bullied, and I wasn't about to put up with that. My psyche was like, okay, let me calm down, because I'm already seeing, I'm already seeing the scissors twisted in some white meat. Not, not that she, even though she was white. It wasn't about her, her white meat because I had another girl I went to school with cousins who didn't know that I was also her cousin's cousin started bullying me and reminding me I was bullying in school and I told her you won't do it now so she decides she gonna take my scissors and say her grandmother give it to her I'm like I look at this girl and saw she had my scissors I paid like 20 something dollars for at another sewing plant that went out of business. And I walked up to her and asked her about it. She told my grandmother to give me this scissors. I said, can I see it? She said, yeah, I look at it. Took it and walked off. And she told me that I take it out. And so she goes into the office and tells the owner, who was already a new owner, that I took her scissors. He calls me into the office. I like, okay, he said, well, he said, well, he looks at me now. I'm 99 pounds soaking wet, soaking wet. Five feet even, barely. She's like 200 pounds. Maybe five, three, five, four, taller than me. 
So, I'm looking at her. Hmm. And at the time, I, when people tell me, what's a size zero dress? Back then, there was size zero clothes that was falling off of me. That's how small I was as an adult. I was in my early 20s. But anyway, he calls me to office. I sit down to have this, um, he to have this discussion with me. And he tells me what she says is her sister, her, her scissors, her grandmother gave her the scissors. I show him, look, I got, and his supervisor was the supervisor that was at the plant that closed. She came there after I came there, so she knew me from the other place. Now, she was there when I ordered that scissors. So, I said, see, it has my initials on it. My maiden name at the time, B.C. And she going to say that's her, that B.C. stands for her grandmother, whatever name she come up with. I look at him. And he's saying, well, she said you took the scissors from her. He just looking at me. He's very... He, he, he was kind of amusing. He was very amused at me. And she's standing there looking at me. I say, I bought this scissors for another plant I left. And I say, and she was there. And I say, and he carved my name in it. That way nobody would take it. And I say, this is my scissors. I say, because she asked me about the scissors. And then next thing I know, the scissors is gone off of my machine. And he says, um, well, she says it's her scissors. I say it's my scissors, and she ain't getting it. He looked me in my face. He looked at his supervisor. She looked at him. The both of them bust out laughing and say, go back to your machine. <laughs> said, he said, okay. So I went back to my machine and sat down. And I set the scissors on the side of the machine. And I want her to come over there and take it. Like I say, you bullied me in high school. That was high school. Mm -mm, you were not bullying me on no job. Because I ain't scared of nobody. In high school, I didn't want to be getting in trouble in the principal office, getting in fights. Whatever. I didn't want to do none of that. I got A's. I'm about getting my grades. Get, getting my grades and graduating. Which is what I did. And so, after all of that, she so upset she could try to get her first cousins who is also my cousins i grew up with because i didn't grow up with her and she didn't even and she, she i don't know how she even know me like that but we all went to the same high school but she tries to get them to it's three of them now and these are fighting these people on the planet everybody in school was scared of these girls but I wasn't scared of them. And her mommy, my mommy ain't scared of nobody. But anyway, she, um, so she goes to get them three, and they four supposed to jump me. Oh, I see, I'm sitting at my machine, I'm looking at them. All of them look back at me. Three of them look back at me. Look at her. She said, I'm not messing with that girl for mama to kill us. <laughs> She said, cuz, mama say, we didn't even know we was cousins until I told them what I was saying about, yeah, they was, they, they, they just want to claim us. And she went back and tell her mama, and her mama came to my mama house, the lady six feet tall, doing a something pound step to the door and threatened my mama. <laughs> talking about, you don't know what we talking about, how you don't tell them kids they cousins. And she tell her, how come my mama didn't. My mama didn't know how we were cousins, even though she had heard that. And she told her, she said, your daddy and my mama are cousins or sisters and aunts and whatever kind of thing. So, and then, then she named my mama said, oh, okay. So she had to come educate my mama because my mama was like us. They say we cousins, but we don't know how. So she can't educate my mama as to how her, how they were cousins. And therefore, we were cousins after that. We knew, we, we, okay, we know. My mama, daddy. So, okay. So she said, uh-uh. She said, we not mess with no girls. She said, no, 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 we not messing with her. She said, you on your own. And I'm sitting there. I don't fight fair. You gonna put your hands on me. Me and my sister's going to work. Mm, this is it. 
Or you all you're gonna get a chair, table, whatever. I'm not nine pounds soaking wet. I can't fight nobody. I had some, I had scoliosis and all kind of thing. Hand hurt and fight. Mm -mm, I'm not fighting nobody. But you can put hands on me, okay? I'm ready to fight. So she got upset, starts crying. And the supervisor tells her she gonna go home for the rest of the day. And she come back. I think she quit because she was shamed. Like, girl, mm -mm, don't work like that. But anyway, with all that story, this is a story about me when I'm talking or whatever. These stories come up. So I grew up as an ADOS. And ADOS been putting up with stuff like that forever. And now in the end, ancestors are speaking to us through the lineage of ADOS. And everybody around us already in position, got their flags, got their, um, their groups of people categorized, but we are not, so we're just supposed to be just scattered in the earth as, now I heard the word Ill, Ill, um, illegal aliens. We are not illegal aliens because first of all, who's over here first? The British and the Spaniards weren't here before the Aboriginals. So they can't come over here, kill off all the people, take the land, settle, go back, drag dark skinned people from all over the planet, drag them here to be beast of burdens for them, and then say, Real little alien? We might be aliens, but we know they're illegal aliens. Because we legal. Because first of all, we might be alien in a foreign land like that 400 year thing they talk about in the Bible. And I'll go with that. Because everything you know they're basing on the Bible or whatever. But illegal? Mm -mm. I ain't never illegal. Illegal immigrants? Yeah. Legal immigrants? Yeah. Natural born immigrants? Yeah. Okay, we got that. Aliens, yeah, okay. We know the immigrant because we didn't immigrate over here and we didn't migrate over here, so we are neither one of those. Now, aliens, I, 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 I go with that one until I get knowledge of anything different. But, alien, mm -mm. yeah, I ain't nothing illegal over here because me and my ancestors were born here. From those that was originally snatched violently and brought here as beast of birds. But anyway, that's it for this video. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye. I'm going to see if I can't get this on 333 is what I'm trying to do. And then I'm going to click it off. Nice.